Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Um, this uh, workshop, as you know, is about scalar heart connection. And someone uh, just about a week ago said, define scalar heart connection as the I Ching on steroids. And another person mentioned that uh, scalar heart connection was like um, a, a, a div divination uh, meets technology. For me, scalar heart connection is basically a way to help us tap into the innate knowing of our own heart. And I know that we, uh, as there's a lot of healers here and people are intuitive and they're, they are tapped into that wisdom, but oftentimes when problems come up, they're, they're, we run into these, uh, these old tapes, these old programs that, that our mind is generated from childhood or ancestral patterns. And it kind of has a tendency to block our ability to access our own innate wisdom. And so this is a, a system that I developed over the years to help me when you know, my buttons get pushed. You know, I needed a way to be able to access that. And I certainly wanted a, a tool to help my clients. You know, people would come to me with uh, different illnesses or pains or emotional problems. They might have you know, an argument with their spouse, you name it. And it's trying to, in the quickest way possible, help them connect to what is the, the, that mind tape, that mind condition tape that has been activated by that, that, uh, that issue. And how can we deal with it through the eyes of the heart, through compassion? I don't always like to use the word problem uh, because, you know, problem is, I, I, the way I see problem is as, an, as opportunities. It's almost like a problem presents itself as an opportunity potential, is the way I look at it. So these problems, these opportunity potentials, are a way of bringing up these suppressed emotional issues that have, we've had since childhood, from past lives, and helping us to be able to assimilate them and to, and to grow and to evolve from, from those experiences. So it's really a way of asking our own heart to give us guidance through those opportunity potentials. I use the word scalar. Scalar is a quantum physics term. The blood flows from the heart into the lungs in a pattern that goes into a figure eight from lungs to heart. And that is basically a Mobius coil. And a Mobius coil has a property of creating a scalar field. And I look at the scalar field as that field of unlimited potentiality. So we are limitless beings if we just open ourselves to that potential. And we can use the scalar field of our heart to do that. And the heart connection part is just that. There's many traditions that refer to the heart as being the portal from the seen world to the unseen world. It's the access from three-dimensional consciousness to five-dimensional consciousness and beyond, who knows. So that's how I got to the term scalar heart connection. The process actually helps us tap into the source of synchronicity. Does everybody familiar with synchronicity? These coincidental events that happen that kind of help guide us and, and, and mold our lives, change our lives in different ways. It's Joseph Campbell referred to them as the, the many helping hands that sort of come along and help us and guide us through our, our life's journey. Um, there is a, I, I like to share this story of synchronicity. This is, uh, there is a man many years ago in London and he was offered a job in California. But he had his family in, in London. He had his whole lifetime in London. And he was like, as good as that opportunity was, he wasn't quite sure about taking the, the job. So the day came where he had to call the, his new employer, perhaps, and, and let him know if he was going to take the job or not take the job. And he still hadn't made up his mind. So he picks up the phone with one hand. And he reaches over to turn down the radio with his other hand. And as he's reaching for the radio dial, this is what comes on. Does anybody recognize Led Zeppelin going to California? Well, when that came on the radio, he says, yes, I'm going to take the job without even thinking. You know, it was like the universe was talking to him. He said, I'm going to take it. 30 years later, he says, that was the best decision I had ever made. 
That is synchronicity. So if synchronicity is out there guiding us and helping us, the many helping hands, then when we're having a, a problem, an opportunity potential, why can't we ask synchronicity directly? Why do we have to beat around the bush and wait for a radio song to come on or some other synchronistic event? Why not just say, hey, I'm having a problem. What do I need to know? Scale heart connection allows us to tap into the source of synchronicity. And my question is, what would our life look like if we were guided by synchronicity every day, every moment of our lives? Well, I know what my life would look like. I would look like her with the, with the bobbing pigtails. I would be happy. I'd be full of joy. I heard someone yesterday ask, well, where, where does joy come from? How is joy and love related? And I, I thought, well, joy is when love tickles us. And that, that is her. She's got that look of just sheer joy. She's connected to joy, where, her, where miracles are a part of her everyday life. So the way I... I see her, her vision of the world is this. This is our planet. It's just this energy entity. It's surrounded by this scalar field of energy, the source of synchronicity. It's just all vibration. It's all energy. And that I, I'm hoping that people will begin to embrace that, begin to understand that more and more so that we can all tap into that. So this is the view of the earth. It's alive. It's, it's interconnected. We're all connected to it. But unfortunately, this has been our paradigm. This has been our view of the world as just this dead rock floating in empty space. And it's here for us to exploit, to take advantage of. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And our mind-brain conditioning reacts to that model where we're afraid of our survival. We're afraid of scarcity. We, we don't cooperate with each other. Instead, we compete with each other. And so all of that builds up these programmings of fear and uh, issues with money and everything else that that sort of model brings to the table. What is happening is a change. There, there's a change in the world where people are starting to realize that that model isn't working. It's really created such a, a disaster effect on our uh, not only economic and political models, but our, our whole environmental structure. And so I ran into this. This is right after, you know, the Syrian refugees um, was, was occurring when it first started. I saw this on Facebook. When you have more than you need, build a longer table, not a higher fence. And I thought, yes, that, that is the message. That's what we need to learn. We need to bring that home. And so that model is us being connected and when we're all connected, then that is where I think world peace will come from. So when I think of world peace, I think of us tapping into our own inner peace. It starts there. And when we tap into inner peace, the way we do that is by stilling our mind, stilling all those negative thoughts that come from our mind, and finding that quiet place where our heart opens. And when our, our, our heart opens, and it's opening to the hearts of others. Now, when I think of... Um, connecting our heart with someone else, we do that naturally when we fall in love, right? And I think what happens is that when we fall in love with someone, our heart opens to them, and our heart is attentive. Our heart starts to beat in harmony with their heart. We can feel what they feel, and we're attentive to them. We want to make sure they're happy. We care for them. And so wouldn't it be beautiful if we could take that and, and love everybody else on the planet in that same equal way? When two people fall in love and their hearts are in sync, they call that one heart, you know, two hearts beating as one. That's the power of love. And that power of love is a vibration that we are all connected to. And when I say that, people think, well, I'm, I'm speaking metaphorically. And on one level, I am. But I want to show you with this next slide how that it, it's not just a metaphor. It's a, it's a real phenomenon, a real physical phenomenon. Uh, astronomers at the University of Stanford were interested in the sound acoustics of solar flares. So if solar flare goes off and the, the sound of that is like this mag, mag, gigantic explosion ripples through the core of the sun to the other side and back again, it takes about nine days for that to come back, for that waveform to come back. Well, because it takes so long, you can't really hear that. So they sped it up 42,000 times. And 42,000 times 
that acoustical phenomenon provided this tone. I want you to listen to this. This is what our sun sounds like. This is the song of the sun. Does anybody recognize that vibration? It's 8440. Pardon? 8440. Very close. Okay. It is the vibration that is surrounding us. It's our earth is in harmony with it. Our hearts are in harmony with it. How did they get that? They got that sound by recording the, the sound of solar flares rippling through the sun. It's a very, you know, low, a lot of data was collected, and they had to speed it up 42,000 times so you could hear it. So that is what you just heard. Now, that one, that is 140, 40, 144 cycles per second. That's the tone. So if that, yes? What's each one? 144. Oh, it's like the note of D. Oh, okay. Okay. You would have a different note, but it, the harmonic would still be related. Okay, so that's why I want to show you these octaves. No matter how many times you speed it up, you still have the, the octave, the harmonic relationship. So at 144, we can hear it, but what if we doubled it? If we doubled it, it would be at 288. If we tripled it, it would be at 432. Now, 432 is the number that shows up in mythology all over the place, if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell. 432,000 years in the Kali Yuga cycle of time, a very large cycle of time. 4,320 is the number of heartbeats in an hour. So the heart is beating in sync with the sound or the song of the sun. 432 sounds like this. Oops. feel that resonation from, you, from your heart, your heart is connected to that. If we go up to the fifth harmonic, the heart beats 72 times per minute. So here the sun is also, the fifth harmonic is 720. And just by coincidence, the diameter of the sun is 864,000 miles. So the purpose of this is to show that we are vibrating in concert, in sync, with the earth, with the sun, the solar system, and I believe that scalar field of unlimited intelligence beyond. When we tap into that unlimited intelligence, we're really tapping in, I think, to the essence of who we really are. Um, it was Gurdjieff, are you familiar with Gurdjieff and his, the Enneagram work that he did? Well, Gurdjieff <clears throat> said, you know, when we think of ourselves, we, we really identify ourselves with a personality. And oftentimes we try to project the personality that we think is going to be accepted by other people. He said one of the problems with personalities is that we don't have just one personality, we have many personalities. And in that regard, he quoted Origen and said that, well, who we are is like a, we have a hundred herds of cows in, within us. We have like a hundred herds of sheep within us. And Carl Jung added to that, he said, who we are um, as an individual we are like a boiling cauldron of contradictions and inhibitions and affectations. So Carl Jung was never one to pull any punches. But when I think about that, I think, you know, yeah, I, I do contradict myself. I'm always, you know, I say this and I do that. Well, I wanted to look at, um, so here's Gurdjieff's model is that we have personality within this circle that Jung used as sort of the symbol for wholeness and the essence outside of that circle. And so I wanted to look at the, all those various herds of cows that are within me and kind of understand those a little bit. So I sent away for an app, and I've shared this with some people. There's an app where you can actually get a portrait of all your hidden personalities, all those personality affectations and contradictions. So I sent away for it, and this is what came back. And I recognize these people. You know, every once in a while, this guy shows up, you know, you never know when that's going to just be, you know, obnoxious and just appear somewhere out in some one unexpected place. But so this is, gives you an idea of our personality affectations. And as Gurdjieff explained, it's the reason why 
when we decide to go on a diet, what happens in the next day or so? We pig, we go off the diet, we pig out, right? We just go off of it. And so Goethe said the reason for that is one of your personalities thought it would be a great idea to go on a diet. But the other 999 personalities had no intention of going on a diet. So how do we resonate with our intention if we have all these personalities running around that aren't in sync with us? Right? So the concept is that when we match the frequency of the reality that we want to manifest without any self-doubt, without any, in other words, all of our personalities need to be on board, then the universe will conspire to create that reality with us. We can't go wrong. When you use the word conspire, how would you use it? Yeah, I, I chose the word conspire because I wanted to make it be something that is co-created. It's not just being created by the universe out there, but we are the universe. So we're co-creating that. So it's like it's a, we're conspiring together to create the universe that we want with 100% of every cell in our body. So what scalar heart connection is, is hoping to achieve is to allow us to ask our heart, well, who is the personality that is standing in the way of my not achieving what I want? I want to have a harmonious relationship, but yet I'm always, you know, I come home and I get in an argument. So I must have like five personalities that can't wait to get home and get into an argument, right? <laughs> well, why is that? You know, I got the other personality saying, what, what are you doing? So there's this inner, inner conflict. So scale heart connection is going to help us bring that personality on the carpet and say, okay, here's your opportunity to speak. You, you've got some issue here. We want to hear about it so that we can resolve that. We can have like a group hug with all of our personalities, okay? So our heart is connected to the knowing of the universe. If our heart is connected to the sun and to the vibration of the solar system, 432 squared, by the way, is the speed of light. And speed of light is Einstein's basic equation for energy. So we are connected to just pure energy. So we must know what the universe knows in the same way that elephants know when a tsunami is coming. Right? They know that an event is coming before the event actually happens. So they're tapped into a knowing that we just haven't allowed ourselves to do. Because so one of our personalities says, it's impossible, you can't do that. So do cockroaches. Cockroaches? Yeah, I guess they've been doing that since the beginning of time. So that's kind of embarrassing that cockroaches know things that we don't give ourselves permission to know. In China, they observe cockroaches. It's a good idea. Okay, well now we need to like be more friendly to our cockroaches. Great. Well, they're really good at surviving. Yeah, they are. Yes. Am I in your way? Dogs also know when their owners are coming home. The minute the owner could be 30 miles away at the supermarket, and when the owner like takes their keys out of their purse, and they start to head towards the car, the dog who's been laying on the floor all day runs to the door and sits and waits. Okay, that's been documented by Rupert Sheldrake over and over and over again. How do the dogs know? There was some research done by scientists in Madrid who took finches and they put them in a cage. And so you've got 15 finches in a cage and then they put a computer monitor right up next to that cage and randomly, at random intervals, they would play a blank video or they would play a video of a snake. And when the video of the snake came on, you can bet that those finches went into hysterics, right? What they did is they allowed the video to run randomly so that not even the researchers knew when it was going to be blank or when it was going to be the snake. And they let that run and what they found out is that the finches responded in hysterics up to nine seconds before the snake video came on. How do finches know which, which is going to be the snake? before it's played. So finches are connected to the future. Do snakes eat birds? Because birds can fly away. Snakes. Well, now when you're in a cage, you see. Oh, but it's not a natural predator, I don't believe. In fact, eagles are a predator of the snake. Well, when you put 15 finches in a cage and you show them a video of a snake, they all went into hysterics. I can't explain it, but I would go into hysterics. <laughs> <laughs> 
So let's go on to human beings. They, they, Dean Radin the, with the Institute of Noetic Sciences and also Rolla McCready with HeartMath and many others have done this, these experiments. So it's not you know, just new, it's been going on for a while. And what they've done is they've replaced the finches with human beings. And they sit the human beings up in front of monitors and they show the human beings uh, a picture of a horrible car accident or a nice meadow with the brook running through it. And they did it randomly. So nobody knew, not even the researchers, if it was going to be a car accident or something nice in nature. And they found that human beings reacted the same exact way as the finches. Not nine seconds, more like three seconds. But what that told me is that our heart knows the future. It knows what is coming up on the monitor. So that gave me the idea that um, th that research, uh, by the way, is called presentiment. It's like uh, pre, so ahead of time. Uh, sentiment, I think, is sentimentality. But it's actually the, the sentiment of, of the, the physical sensation of the body. The people were going into shock. They're having all the symptoms of shock before the image came on the screen. So that's what that's all about. But I, I thought to myself, well, if I have a problem, I come home and I immediately jump into an argument with my spouse, uh, maybe I could write down five reasons why I'm doing that or five different other ways that I could handle the situation. And I would put those on a card. Well, you could come home and say something nice. You could compliment her. You could do this or do that. I have five different choices. And I tape them behind the monitor just like the, the snake or the car accident shows up. And I can ask my heart, which one of these monitors has the statement that is most appropriate to my situation? Would that work? Do you think that would work? I mean, is it logical that would work? I think it was logical. Huh? It'd just be synchronicity. I'm, I'm like saying, okay, well, which, which one of those monitors? Um, I don't need synchronicity to knock the monitor over. I can just ask my heart, is it monitor number one, number two, number three, number four? Just like what the price is right or something. Like picking account from the tarot. Huh? Like picking account from the tarot. It's like picking, that's why I call it, you know, um, the 21st century I Ching because you're, Instead of rolling coins, you're just asking your heart, pick a number one through five. So um, here is the problem. When I think of all my multiple personalities, I might have multiple uh, reasons why I behave that way and multiple solutions. In fact, knowing myself, I knew I had an infinite number of issues, an infinite number of possibilities and suggestions that my heart could give me. So I'm like, well, how, well, I don't know where to get. Okay, heart, pick a number one through 23,000. <laughs> I'd be there all day. Or imagine the tarot deck would be like this. So I said, what I need is a matrix. I, I need to be able to use the heart's ability to count, which is related to the archetype of number. And I need to be able to boil this down in a way that I can ask my heart simple numbers. And we can put this in a matrix that would be very simple and quick to use. So I want to go through just because I enjoy this, this is like the most fun for me, is to show you the sacred geometry and the archetypal patterns that lie behind this. And then after I go through this, I want to demonstrate it. And you don't need to remember any of this. This is just for pure enjoyment so that you can see how the matrix came about, okay? So there's not going to be any tests on the geometry or any of the numbers, so we just relax. I wanted a geometry that would allow me to create a matrix related to the heart. And the best heart geometry I knew was from the ancient chakra symbol for the heart chakra, right? And that is that. It's this Star of David or this 10 tetrahedron. It's a green and there's 12 petals around it. That's all the clues I had. I also remembered that Carl Jung and Gurchi talked about the circle being the symbol for wholeness. And after all, we're trying to get to essence, which means we are getting all of our personalities unified and connected to the, to the universe, to universal consciousness. Well, Buckminster Fuller came along and said, you know, a circle which is 360 degrees also has an outside. And I thought that was cool because it's personality on the inside and the essence is also on the outside. And 360 and 360 is 720. 
72 heartbeats per hour. Do you remember the fifth harmonic of the sun, yes. 144? So I thought that was really cool. We might really have something going on here. 72 heartbeats per hour, 432, um, 432 per hour. So I stuck with 432, and I asked myself, how can I show 432 in that circle? And it came to me that a quarter of a circle would look like that on top. A third of a circle I could put in the middle, and a half a circle on the bottom. So do you see how I have 432 stated as a geometry? So I felt that this symbol, at least it has the beating heart in it. This symbol is now, it's, it's alive. And then I realized that if I drew a line from the bottom of the top one to the center and I connect them, I'm back to the inverse triangles of the heart chakra. Do you see the geometry? So I don't know, I got really excited about that because I felt like when I see this symbol now, I see the heart in it. I can feel the heart beating when I look at this symbol. But I, don't, I didn't understand, why is there 12 petals around it? What, what were the ancients thinking when they used the number 12? So I went back to my 432 geometry, and just playing with it, I realized that you could fit the, the flower of life into it perfectly. And that, for me, just gave me more validation that there's something very powerful about this geometry and about this matrix. So the flower of life, that the third, you see, I'm just going to drop down the fourth into the center. And I can stack six around the center and six around those. And what I end up with is Metatron's cube. Are you familiar with the geometry of Metatron's cube? Well, that's it. That's essentially what it looks like. Metatron is known in ancient times to be the chief archangel who is, the, who is God's messenger to human beings. And I love that idea because I can apply that to the heart. The heart is basically the messenger between us and the infinite. So here we have it stated in geometry. We're building this from the heart chakra symbol. And we can put the up and down triangles in there. And if I back out all that, this is the traditional view of Metatron's cube. It gives us the sense of essence pointing up and our personality pointing down, which is that alchemical motto, as above, so below. And I haven't solved for the 12 petals yet, but I notice I have all these empty places. And when I fill them in, Sure enough, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we're back to all the components of our geometry. And when I saw that that way, I see 12 also in the zodiac. And when you look at the zodiac, you might be familiar with the different houses, the different signs. What you find in those different houses and those different signs ruled by different planets is they all have different personality aspectations. So I was trying to take all those personality qualities and I had all those millions of monitors. I could just put all of those personality issues into the same matrix of the zodiac. But I could do more than that. I can also take Joseph Campbell's Journey of the Hero, which uh, coincidentally there are 12 stages, and I can put the 12 stages and all of the, the issues and the archetypal energies that go behind those 12 stages. And I can put that into my matrix. And then last but not least, the chakras all have their own energy dynamics. And so all of those energy dynamics go into the matrix. And that is what the matrix looks like. Now, don't worry if this doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. Because I do a two-day workshop on all this. And by the end of the day of those two two-day workshops, you understand the dynamics of each one of those houses and the planets and the different stages. I just wanted to just give you a brief overview of what it looks like. So when we do the session, you realize that when we're asking the heart, we're zeroing in on these archetypal energies. And, that, and the answers within those is what's coming back to us. So we have this... We've solved for the 12 petals, we've solved for the up and down triangles, but we haven't solved for the color green. Joseph, um, it's Leonard Horowitz in the early 90s wrote a book called The Bible Codes. And in there, Joseph, he talks about Joseph Paleo who describes the Sofegio Code. And the Sofegio Code are six notes that, are sent, that were supposed to have been the notes used for the hymn to St. John the Baptist. 
So there's something very special about those frequencies or those notes. A lot of things have been attributed to them. I, I, don't, I haven't seen anything scientific to back that up. But what I want to show you is some very unique properties about these notes. Remember, these are, are frequencies. They're like notes that you can hear. You can sing to them. The color, uh, the 528 is, I'm sorry, these are the, the six notes. 396, 417, 528. I call them the quantum healing codes because I've taken all of these and created 21 different intervals. I put them together as all the chord possibilities and called that quantum healing codes. And what I notice, if we convert the frequency into terahertz, which is trillions of cycles per second, we have color. We have the color of light. So 528 in terahertz is the color green. And when you see the, these are the other codes, you see how they line up with red, with kind of like an orange and cyan, blue, and, vel and uh, violet. It seemed to me that those colors and those codes could be attributed to the chakras. And we saw how we're using the chakras in the slide before. So those frequencies might just be able to help us harmonize the, some emotional pattern that we're having within one of those energy centers. I want you to hear what they sound like. This is 396, 417. Oops, we missed a sound there. 528. Okay, you'll have to hear those later. Let's see if we can, when I put them together, I call this the open heart chord. It's sort of the golden mean relationship between these four notes. That is, that, that is the image of that when it's played through water. It's got 14 different angles on it. It's, just very, it's like the double heart. The color green, remember, was, it was 528. So the heart chakra at 528 cycles per second is the color green. And what else do we know about green? Green is the, is the pigment of the chlorophyll in plants that synthesize the photons from the sun that give us oxygen, that gives us life. So green is not only nature's way of growing and evolving, but it's also the very life-giving substance that we evolve from. So there's Mother Nature. And our connection with Mother Nature is really getting back to green. It's getting back to the frequency of our heart. <clears throat> now, when I looked at the quantum healing codes, I realized that they are a vibration. And a vibration is a frequency, which is a length. So what if I took these lengths and I put them together as triangles? What would happen? So I put these three, um, 396, 639, and 417 together as a triangle. And look what you can do with that one triangle. You can place them side by side 12 times. So I'm getting a sense that those vibrations are also somehow two-dimensional entities that are vibrating in space and time, in three dimensions. And there's 12 of them. And 12 is the number that we have of the petals around the heart chakra symbol. Well, look what happens when I put the size of the moon around these vertices, and I stack them around the center and one in the middle. Do we not have Metatron's cube again? So we just arrived at the same geometry, but this time we're using frequency. We're using sound to, to create this three-dimensional, almost like a three-dimensional hologram. 396 and 528 are, is another triangle, and when you flip it over, you get a triangle that is the exact dimension of the Great Pyramid of Giza. So that tells me that the ancients were on to something, that this is not a new system. This is a very old model, a very old system. And lastly, on these numbers, uh, remember the 144 and it went up to 864? If I do the same with 396 and I take its harmonics, and I go up very, very high, I find that these two are both have 7920 that are the same. Ex and they're exactly the same. 528, our heart chakra. Remember, this one is earth. This is the color red, related to the root chakra, earth. 
528 has these harmonics, and it all ha also has 7920. And 7920 happens to be the diameter of the Earth. So it's almost, to me, it's telling us that the Earth is really the stage where we evolve from. It's like where we learn to go through all those personality aspects until we can become one with, uni with the universe. 2160, this one, is the diameter of the moon. So we've got the moon, and we have the sun, and we have the earth, and we have the heart. We have Mother Nature, the color green, all come together to where when we feel like this, we're, you know, we might be looking really happy on the outside, but on the inside, we're ready to kill somebody. We can ask our heart for guidance. We can ask our heart, what, is, what was the trigger that is creating this that won't allow me to shift into that place of joy that I want to be? So all we have to do is ask our heart to show us what we need to know in order to restore that balance in our system. I have, uh, today I want to ha ask someone if they want to volunteer to come up. So be, be thinking about it. I'm going to ask Marilena to actually um, assign you numbers. And then I'm going to turn around. I'm going to select the number that is going to be for the best learning of the whole group. Okay? So just, um, we're having a, 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 that two-day workshop is in December 12th and 13th. We don't have a location yet, but I mean, I don't know, maybe it will be here. We're going to be in Brazil. If you happen to be in the area at the end of November, please come and join us. And uh, in Seattle in February, if you know anybody that lives in Seattle. ScaleHeartConnection.com um, has a, a list of the, the workshops and where they're going to be. And, of course, that's always changing. Um, we have in the next room on the table, we have uh, the book, Scale of Heart Connection. This is more of a, it goes into more detail about the geometry and about the quantum physics. In case you wanted more numbers and more geometry, that's the book for you. And the, the Quantum Healing Codes comes with the CD that has all those 22 tracks, 21 plus the open heart chord. And it tells you how to use them even without using the Ask Your Heart system. You can just use the table, and it tells you if you're feeling like this, we'll use this code. If you feel like that, this would be a good code to use. And we have a, a self-guided CD that takes the quantum healing codes and puts them to music in the background. And each, each sort of harmonic piece is related to each of the chakras. And then the narrator is walking you through each of those emotional centers and just asking you to sort of check in with yourself to see is there something that feels out of balance. We worked for several years in a clinic where we worked with very chronically ill patients. And um, we spent a lot of time working on both the physical level but also on the emotional level. So this book is sort of like our experience where we found 14 basic principles that we shared with all of our clients, all of our patients. And so we put them into a book so that we could share it with you as well. All these are on the table. Um, Ask Your Heart is uh, an app. It's for your iPhone and your, your Android. It's like uh, $2 or $1.99. Um, and it allows you to ask your heart anywhere. You know, I don't recommend doing it when someone cuts you off in traffic because you're driving, but you could pull over. If someone's rude to you in the, in the supermarket. I just get my, my app out and I'm like, okay, what do I need? What do I need to learn from, from this, right? You can go to our website, which is scalarheartconnection.com. And you can click on Ask Your Heart, and you can do the same process for free online. And that's, that's the system that I want to show you today. The workshop takes this same system, but it's more for practitioners or people who want to go into a deeper level, because we do talk about ancestral patterns. We talk about the birth process, the different you know, times in the moon. We, in the womb, we look at different triggers. And there are different steps that um, this shorter version doesn't have. But this is a very powerful and quick way to, to get to the heart of things. And so I'm going to switch the computer over. And, um, and while I'm doing that, Marlena is going to assign numbers to you.
One through ten. One through ten. It's the number seven. <laughs> and Marilena, you're going to come up here. I'm going to ask you to stand. Why don't we just both stand so it's so, so short? Okay. okay. And uh, Marilena's going to turn the computer over here and be the scribe. Click over to. So you pick the question or I pick the question? You're going to um, come over right here. Yes. Okay. Can you see okay? I don't want to block you. You okay? You can sort of see? Oh. Um, why don't you stand right here? Yeah, why don't you back up right there? I just don't want to block you, that's all. Okay. So, um, so right here we're going to just type in what is the issue. So, Evelyn, what, what would you like to ask your heart about in front of all these people? The issue is about my daughter. About what? My daughter. You want to ask your heart about your daughter. Okay, uh, anything specific about your daughter? Yes, about um, a recurring issue uh -huh. in communication. Okay. Which seems to trigger the past and cr create uh, anger in her. Okay. So, okay. a way of behaving or yeah. a way of saying something. Okay. Which creates anger in her. Okay, so there is a, a resonance, a vibration in Evelyn that when she gets in the same field as her daughter, it provokes anger in the daughter. Not, not always, but sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. So, so it's always your. It's like there's always a landmine there. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so, what we want to do is ask the heart. Well, what do I need to know about what is what personality aspect is like a little bit out of control on that on that issue. Who, who is that person? What does it believe? What is that old program that keeps running that my daughter picks up on and reacts to? Right. Okay? Yes. So to find that, ask your heart to show you a number one through seven. Seven comes up. Seven comes up. So it's just like, you know, if you're picking a, a card out of the tarot deck, you know, there's just one card that stands out. And when people, I ask them to pick a number from their heart, there's always a number that just bubbles up. So for Evelyn, it was the number seven. And seven is related to the crown chakra. The crown chakra. Um, okay. You're what? Is this online? Yeah, no, this is offline. Yeah. And scroll down. All the way to the bottom. Okay, so apparently we updated our website and um, and something is thrown off. Um, I can do it on the phone or you can uh, switch over to the online version. Okay, um, so so go to. Um, Let's just do this on the phone. Yeah, I can show off the app, but you can't see it. Oh, you have it. Okay. Two dollars and twenty cents. Online is for free. The app on the phone. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, it shouldn't. I don't know why it's that. <laughs> okay, let's do this. So um, this will be very interesting. Now we're we're communicating with synchronicity. All right. Now when so I've learned that synchronicity is in control. So I allow that. And so I see this as synchronistic. Right. Yes. So we got the crown, and we were all ready to jump into the crown, and then it crashed, which, you know, in, in my room, you know, an hour and a half ago, I was working just fine. So very interesting. 
So we're going to honor that. Now I'm going to ask Evelyn to pick another number, one through seven. One. One. And it's going to be interesting to see what comes up, because it may not be the crown. So we went from the crown, from the crown chakra to the brow. We're, we're, we're going down. So sometimes it, all it is is just enough to bring up that there is an issue with crown, and it, boom, it just clears. Yeah. So cl the, the crown is about you know, our mental clarity, connection to source. So we just needed to know that there's an issue, that that issue can resolve itself if we stay in connection with source. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, and now we want to get into a deeper level and it's showing us brow. And so the brow chakra um, is asking us to show us the emotion that has been overactivated. So when Evelyn walks into the room with her daughter, the, the, the daughter is feeling this emotion. Right. One through four. Four. It's over exhaustion. So when you when you see your daughter, I mean, do you find yourself working too hard, or are you exhausted? Yes, yes, yes. yeah, that's interesting. Can can yes. you describe that? What is how is the dynamics of that play out? I guess I guess maybe two a lot of things for her, and maybe I feel like we need to do something. Okay. Which I don't know what it is, maybe. Uh huh. Or maybe I feel like. Uh, yeah, there is an issue of doing a lot, having to do a lot, or maybe not doing enough, and not knowing what to do. It, yeah. Okay, so issue. again, crown and brow is mental, is there's confusion, so I'm not sure what to do. Yeah. But I'm over exhaustion, I mean, you know, here you are again, I need, I need to do something for yes. you. And the daughter's like, you don't need to do anything for me, why do you keep, why do you keep right. doing that? Right. Yeah, very interesting. Now we need to know what is the negative mind tape? What is the programming that's running in the background that the mind has picked up this belief, whether it's ancestral, past life, something that happened in childhood, parental, uh, something one through 17. I'm afraid to let others know who I am. Hmm. How old is your daughter? 34. She's 34? So do you have like an adult to adult relationship? Adult to adult? Yeah. Is it still mother-daughter or is it hmm. more authentic than that? Uh, it depends on the moment. Hmm? It depends on the moment. So in general, it's adult relationship. But in the things that I have to do, it's more mother-daughter. More mother-daughter. And yeah. so the, the brain is, the, the heart is saying, well, your, your thinking about it is not coming from an authentic place. Right? I'm afraid to let her know who I really am. Huh. Yeah. And I do feel she doesn't really know me. She doesn't really know you. Yeah. Although okay. she thinks she really knows me. Yeah. Yeah. But but your mind, your heart is saying, but your mind hasn't allowed you to really let her truly know you. You haven't yes. let her in That's to true. that deeper level. So um, what we need now is to choose the unmet heart need. The unmet heart need is that when we go into these, these old thought patterns, that is a vibration. Those personalities stand there in the background like the ones that, that said they wanted to go on a diet but didn't really want to go on a diet they block out the possibility of us being successful on the diet. And so when we're not allowing others to see who I am, who I truly am, we're blocking out the vibration of something bigger, something more positive. And we need, we need to know what that is. One through uh, 44, there's a bunch Sweet. of them. Three. So that unmet heart need, that positive vibration, is nurturing. Me nurturing or her nurturing? I think it's you. Me nurturing her? Oh, yeah. I did not nurture her. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Being nurturing. Yeah, I, she doesn't allow me to be nurturing. She doesn't allow you to be nurturing yeah. because Although she I, doesn't know who you really are. Right. Although I do a lot of things. Yeah, which you're overexhausted about. Right, but it's still not allowing me to be nurturing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so it just so happens over time I realized that these unmet heart needs tend to be the antidote to the emotion. And the emotion was overexhaustion. And so being nurturing is the antidote to overexhaustion. Interesting, because for example, she wouldn't let me hug her. She won't let you hug her? Yeah, for okay. example. All right. So it's, it's like there is a distance, the boundaries. Okay. And so we need to shift that. We need to be able to be on for nurturing and letting her know who I truly am. And we're going to ask the heart, what is the vibration that I need to replace that old, worn out, negative mind tape with? And that is a number one through eight. One through eight? One through eight. Oh, 11 came up, I don't know why. You one, came? 11 came up, so okay. one through eight. Okay. Eight. Eight. I am comfortable in my body. I am comfortable in my body. So it's being comfortable in my body that we... Being comfortable with who you are, letting her in, letting her hug you, hugging her with your body. Yeah, I'm comfortable with my body. Well... It, with her, but I probably maybe in general. Are, do you, are you comfortable with your body? So I was, but I'm not. Um, I like to dance, I like to move, so I'm not sure. Although I like to lose weight, so maybe okay. I'm not so comfortable so you're with not, right So you're not 100% <laughs> comfortable. So one of those personalities is like, I'm not comfortable with my body. And um, I'm not really letting my daughter in. Okay. Right? And because I'm not letting her in, I'm not really recycling that and being nurturing. Interesting. Right. Interesting. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to listen to a quantum healing code yes. that lines up with the energy dynamics of being nurturing right? and being comfortable with my body. And so that quantum healing code is one through seven. We're going to ask our heart to pick. One through seven? One to seven. Seven. And we're going to listen to this. And while we're doing this, I'd like you to do uh, figure eights. Yeah. Right? This figure eight is like that scalar feel, that Mobius coil that goes through the heart. And... <clears throat> And by the way, all of us are going to be affected by this. There's a, a piece in every one of us that can benefit from this session. So we're all in this together. You can feel it in your hands. Yes. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Yes. We have yes. The relationship with what? Well, I guess, how is this gap different than the relationship with the relationship that somebody else creates between the two of us? Like, how is that different? With the same factors and that? Yeah, so um, possibly you could. The, the difference is how I've set up each of the different the chakras and the statements for each one. So the, that matrix is what needs to be built into the program. The programming is not so difficult. Um, what's difficult is connecting all the dots with the matrix excel, itself. So you have to give the heart the platform and how, how the pieces fit together. 
And then um, the, the truth is that all those numbers are randomized. So one through seven is always, you know, one is not one, one is one through seven. And we did that because we found that there's a, a positive action in the, in, the, in the more practitioner version, the longer version, where after we do the session, it's like, well, okay, well, what do you need now to like really put this into action? And number seven is a massage. And I knew number seven was a massage. So every time I would do a session with my wife, I'd always pick number seven, right? So we started to memorize them. We realized well, we needed, you know, like shuffle this up so that we don't, we don't keep doing that. Our mind, we don't want our mind to get involved. So I, what I find is that even though it's randomized, just like the I Ching, the heart knows what the number is behind the number that's been randomized. Like the snake. Just like the snake in the finch. Thank you. And, and interestingly enough, we, we can also uh, collect data and we can, we can do some statistical analysis to, to see, well, I mean, if this is truly random, then we should just get a, a random, you know, a normal probability distribution, right? But if, if the heart is, is um, interfacing with synchronicity, then some of those numbers should be skewed, right? It won't just be random. In other words, our consciousness is affecting that. And what we have found on a preliminary basis is that it's skewed dramatically in two areas. Are you curious what those two areas are? Yes. The first area is uh, our, our connection with spirit, our connection with the, the, with the divine, right? And then the other one is uh, issues with self-worth. So on a collective conscious level, you know, with people doing this program from all around the world, what's coming up is humanity is not completely connected to nature and to their hearts and to the universal consciousness, which is all we've been talking about. And that happens because we don't feel worthy. Yeah, so we need to shift to being worthy and we need to reconnect with the divine. And once that happens, we don't need scalar connection. This is just like a, a, a tool that I hope goes obsolete one day <laughs> for the sake of my grandchildren yeah, and the planet. So are there any other questions? Yeah. Can you talk about the difference between the healing properties of 417 versus 432 and why, why a musician would choose one over the other? Because I play 417. Okay. I don't know if you, that's your thing, or if you well, like having... Well, um, so my thing is, is dealing with finding out what is the negative statement. Like with, with Evelyn, we needed to know what was interfering with her relationship. So I want to know that. The, the codes, the music that goes with that is, is, in a sense, secondary. You know, I used to use tuning forks or color... The truth is, I find that when people get the, to the core of what their belief system is, they say, oh yeah, I, I do do that. I haven't been letting my daughter in. As soon as they get that, boom, it shifts just like that. It just shifts. Now, I, li I like to use the quantum healing codes to support that. And by that, I mean it's, it has shifted. But let's just make sure that every personality is, hears that and is in tune with it. So I'll ask them to repeat it several times and then listen to a tone that the heart picks. And I've, I just use the quantum healing codes because of the way they create the same uh, geometry of the matrix. So I thought, wow, that's like wonderful. So they're lining up with the, like if the issue is with the brow chakra, she might get the tone that is harmonizing the brow chakra. 432 is not really a specific chakra, although it is sort of like that blue kind of color. I mean, it's sort of like orange color. So 417 is definitely in that water chakra. We have those deep emotions. And 432 would be just a little bit up more towards the solar plexus. I think that 432 is um, connected to 396 and 528. It's, it's the same number. You, you remember the, the diagram? So 144 and, and 396 and 528, those two quantum healing codes, harmonically are related to 432. So, so you can use 432 just fine. 
But if you're just playing a tone, but there's no emotional context to it, what does it mean? You're just listening to it. But if you use it in a context with, oh, I need to connect with my daughter, and by the way, this is what that sounds like, that, that moves a lot more energy than just listening to it for the sake of listening to it. Now, I would rather listen to 432 or 417 composition than 440, so I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's not a benefit. Does that answer your question? Sort of? Okay. I think, yeah, you're not into the musical side, but it's much maybe more into the, what these tones do in response to a question. I, I'm, versus I'm playing to an audience that hasn't asked me a question. Okay. But I feel like there is an underlying question that's just sitting with everyone. Okay, right? absolutely with everyone. Exactly. Yeah. I just said that. Connection to spirit and self-worth. So that absolutely. In this process, we're getting right to the specific right. of it. And that specific has a specific tone. And when they come together as chords, it becomes very dynamic because you're pulling the chakras together. So I think that was probably a better answer. Yes? Can you provide us more examples how we can use a part to make a decision on a behavior point that we on the computers? We, we may not always be able to do that, but if someone wants to make a decision, we answer someone's question, we spoke from the heart, we elaborate on how we can do that. Well, I, I would do it with the app or with the program because what happens if, if we have an issue and we ask our, our heart, but the mind has already suppressed the issue, it's hard, almost impossible to, to get there. So all these childhood memories that we're reacting to are, are so far suppressed that we, we don't even know where they are. So, so that's, why, um, that's why I developed this technology so that we can ask the heart specifically to show us what my mind is lying to me about. My mind's not going to tell me what the problem is, otherwise I wouldn't have the problem. I've had it all my life. So I get triggered by different things, but I need to know what is, why, why am I triggered? So I think at some point you can develop uh, an intuition, but you know I've been doing this for 18 years, and I still get triggered with things. I have to have somebody else do the session for me. And that's why healers go to other healers when they have problems, because you can't see behind the mind's program, behind, behind the mind's mask. So, so people's intuition can also be a little bit not 100% accurate, because if the mind is the part Right, and so the exercise is when things are happening in the environment, we need to pick up how it feels, and then filter that through the, through the brain for an appropriate response. And what we do is we skip the feeling and we just go, you know, I see this and I react to the way, you know, my dad used to react, so I just smack you, right? I don't even think about it. And then, then we get into trouble. <laughs> Sorry. For what? <laughs> for multiple, I, I don't think so. <laughs> it, it's, it's... It would take too long. I, I don't suggest it. <laughs> yes. The heart takes its head. Casting is a lot of stuff. It may not be phrasing it the way it's clear as I want to, but certainly it's not clear to me that it's not clear to me that it's not clear to me that it's not clear to me and listen to your heart. Uh, and I've read that we have multiple voices going on within us. But the wise people have always talked about if you get still enough and meditative enough, your voice will speak. Right. For example, there was a famous uh, heart doctor named Dave Ornish. He would say to his heart patients, speak to your heart, listen to your heart. It will tell you why it's blocked. Right. And he, he believed and he wrote stories where these people were really getting answers. And is, is your is, is you is that any I, I don't know but I, I don't know where my question is, but that's I'm like, it, the it's intuition? totally the same. <clears throat> I totally agree with what you're saying. That's why I said this is like a tool to help us to access the intuition that we innately have. Um, if we can if if we can get quiet enough, we can hear the heart's intuition. It's the if that is the problem. We don't always get quiet enough. And before we give ourselves a chance to get quiet, we're already reacting from mental mind conditioned reactions. So if, if we are, and I'm not a master meditator, but if we, if, could we, if we can get deep enough and still enough, 
can we really get to that intuition? Yes, yes. And so, this gets obsolete. yeah, that's why this gets obsolete. You see, see, most people are already, you know, tapped into that intuition. But, but this, I'm showing this because as practitioners, you have so many clients that, that haven't even a clue how to get there. This is helps help them to find that intuitive place. And, you know, we, we, uh, well, we don't have a lot of time, but this came up and I want to just share this. And that is that um, um, Candace Pert, you know, many years ago was doing the molecules of emotion. And they discovered over 280 neural peptides. And she said, these are all molecules of different emotions that the different chakra centers pick up on. So each chakra has its own collection of those neuropeptides. The heart has the receptor sites for all of them. Now that's 280. And when I ask men in the room, how many emotions, feelings are they you know, in touch with? You know, they have like the obvious one and maybe five, yeah. right? And ask a woman and she runs out of hands and, and feet real quick. But even that is 20. So where are the other 260 emotions, right? So that means that 90% of, of the feelings, possibilities that we are wired for, we're, we're not connected to. That's 90% we're not connected to. How, what is the percentage of junk genes that they talk about? 90%. So I think that the 90% that they call junk genes would be activated when we got in touch with those other 90% of our feelings and our emotions. And imagine how powerful we would be if all of our genes were feeling everything around us in all dimensions, in all time and space. But we said, you know what, I'm, only, I'm going to stick to these five. Okay, so I have a problem, I'm going to ask my heart, you know, my intuition is like, I have a repertoire of five. <laughs> this is just going to help you, you know, get to 144, honestly. But there's another 208. I don't even know what they are. I'll feel the motion of flabbergasted right now. Like You're feeling the motion of flabbergasted. I'm going to add that to the program. <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> flabbergasted. What? Candace Pert. Did she write about Yes, it's called Molecules of Emotion. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and then after that, she dedicated herself to uh, research on the chakras. She died about three years ago. So what we know as human beings is really very limited. Yeah. Limited, very limited. I have 10 minutes if you want to do one more session. Without, without interruption. No, I'll do it without interruption. It'll be really fast. So uh, I'll turn around and Mary Lane, tell me how many numbers. Three. Okay. I have to think of something serious? No, it doesn't have to be serious. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Something it. musical. No, I've got something even more fun. Okay. And what is the issue? The issue is... Mm -hmm. What would you like to ask your heart about? So many things. <laughs> what? There's so many things. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I am trying to become eventually food free, breatharian. And so I'm questioning how legitimate is this pursuit for me in this lifetime? And how quickly should I, how aggressively should I pursue it? Okay. Ask your heart to show you number one through seven. And this is in the throat. So this is about self-expression, creative self-expression. And let's find the emotion behind it, one through four. It's grief. <clears throat> so when we think of being a, a breathitarian, well, as someone who doesn't eat, they just live on, on the air, on breath. Right. Okay, so, so I want you to think of breath and the lungs and the throat chakra is connected to lungs and to breath. So your desire to be a breathitarian is there's an underlying 
issue a tape running around grief and breath? Are you, are you connected with any grief in your life? No. You have grief. I think there's like an underlying, there's like an undertow of grief. It's almost like unlabeled. There's no pictures, there's no story, there's just grief. It's okay. almost like a pure... Okay. So if we were doing what I'm hearing, and if we were doing the longer version, we would be able to tap into ancestral traumas and things like that. We're doing the shorter version, so we're going to just see what, what does the heart tell us in terms of like a direction. So I ask your heart to show you a number. for the, This is the negative mind belief one through nine. So this is the tape that's running in the background, the program that's running in the background that is connected with grief, but we're not really sure where it's coming from. So nine is I'm afraid to express my truth. That's come up before. Has it? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to we're going to identify the unmet heart need. So while we are in fear of expressing our truth, it's blocking the positive. The underlying grief is blocking something positive, and that's one through one through forty four. It's um, positive touch. Positive touch. It's blocking it. Yeah. So it's it's could be not receiving positive touch from mother, or it could just be some other you know episode that sort of threw you off with receiving, having the feeling of being of positive touch. Being touched is a huge huge issue for human beings. We don't get touched enough. It's huge, comes up a lot. Let's ask the heart. So um, positive touch would be the antidote to grief. And to really embed that positive touch, we need a message from the heart, one through 10. I inspire others through my voice. I inspire others through my voice. Yeah. What does that one relate to? So, relating to others with your voice, you play violin. But I'm supposed to be a singer and I play violin instead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> touch people with your voice, which is your breath, then you will positively be touching them, and the energy will be positively touching you, and you can breathe that. Mm -hmm. hmm? Can't hear you? Yes. I am a singer, but... I'm not expressing his truth, right? I'm not expressing, yeah. Yeah, I'm supposed to be singing, and um, it's just too sensitive for me. Like, I can play my violin, and if you don't listen, I'm okay. It hurts, but I'm okay. If I sing and you don't listen, I'm crushed. So I'm, I'm like, no, you can't have that. It's like so, too precious to share. So you want to be positively touched with the audience's response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Um, you're going to hear a quantum healing code that is going to help you shift into the vibration of I express myself and I positively touch and I positively receive touch. Are you ready for that? Okay. Then pick a number one through seven. Six. And I want you to say, I inspire others through my voice. I inspire others. <clears throat> Three times out loud while we're listening to this.
Hanging 639, the throat. That all ties in with not eating. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> who who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> right? I'm not hearing your voice. Uh, Well, it never surprises me. It's just like every time I do a session, I just get this wow effect, and it's what keeps me doing it because there's something out there that keeps popping these numbers up in like the perfect order and in ways that bring up things that we couldn't have even thought of, you know? We're, we're just, I mean, everything you're saying about intuition is true, but there's, it is so deep that we still need, we, we just haven't really accessed the whole pool yet. Right, right, and so it's not, it's not intellectual. It's just doing. It's just doing and feeling and trusting that there is that divine intelligence out there, the synchronicity that is guiding it. You know, I used to be petrified coming up here and doing a session because I'm, I'm like, oh, what if it doesn't work? <laughs> right? What if I get a number and they're like, what are you nuts? You know? Yeah, I've been doing this for 18 years, and every time I do it, it just blows me away. I've, it has never let me down. I'd like to share that I met him a few months back and I got to be one of the, the people to experiment on. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it was something with my son. And uh, I listened to the code and I applied the learning about what was inhibiting me and my relationship between kids in that area is huge. And it really was only that one. Amazing. Yeah. And I, I just acted on it. And it's been wonderful. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. You had a question? So when you listen to the code, is it only for that duration that it's on, on our app? Or do you play it today? You can. You can, uh, you can play it more. You can repeat it. Um, you can let your intuition be your guide. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, I, I used to run it for like three minutes, and then I would repeat it. But when I did the app, I realized that um, for most people, they shift so fast that, that you know, a minute is enough. Yeah. And if you have the quantum healing codes, you can repeat it. Some might, the action might be to listen to more quantum healing codes. Um, I have one. The, the CD that is self-guided is one that people who have trouble going to sleep, they love it. And some people um, have attempted to listen through to all the quantum healing codes in order. And I, I don't recommend it because there are some very dissonant notes in there that work to break up old, lodged, you know, um, old memory patterns from childhood, old traumas. And if you just go start listening to it and suddenly you run into a dissonant and suddenly you start, you know, crying for no reason, and then, you know, that, that could be like a little bit off-putting. So I, I always recommend people listen to the codes in the context of what the heart is recommending. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'll be here if you have any questions. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm looking forward to your singing. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Jimmybfree.com if you want to check out my violin stuff. Okay.